right, everyone, good evening. Uh, this is not our normal or typical meeting of the Conservation Commission. We had agreed to meet um, tonight to review uh, proposed um, uh, additional conditions to our special order of conditions. And so as such, we're gonna have um, uh, just a discussion of the various um, additional conditions. And we hope to be productive tonight and also hopefully won't be here too, too long. So having said that, we were provided by uh, Ms. Buto, I think 14 pages. And it, it includes, I'll just read, read it into the record. There are sample special conditions for wetlands orders. And that consists of If you look at the order of conditions um, form, there there are a number of conditions that have been laid out by DEP, and then these are oh, okay. our additional conditions, and these have been developed uh, over a long period of time. We we had um, the, the the special order of conditions, the one page sheet that you have, was in existence in a, a, a different form back when I started uh, start with the commission. Um, too many years ago. And so we've made a couple of additions since then. Um, and so I think the goal here is to go through the some, some other um, proposed conditions to see if they will, if we can add them to our special um, conditions. Because ha we have not updated these. I think the last time we updated these when we um, included the 25 foot no build zone uh, in our, um, our bylaw and regulations. And so that was several years ago. So anyway, having said that, the, the sample special orders consist of 14 pages, and then there is another um, two-page document that talks about, I guess it just says questions. So, um, Allison, you have had a chance, um, you actually, was it an MACC conference that you attended? Yep. And, uh, and uh, my understanding is that these were um, handed out or given out. Do you have an idea of, um, specifically of what you would like to include um, to our current standing uh, special conditions? Or should we, I'm trying to figure out the best way to go through this, um, you know, to be efficient if, um, if we can. Well, as I went through them, um, you know, I, I didn't think that I would like as many as I did, but unfortunately, the more you read them, the more they're like, yeah, that might come into play at some point. Um, I had picked out the ones that made sense to me, um, but it's a lot, so I would like everyone to help us you know, okay. lower this down. Um, but the classes are, are really informative and very, um, you know, eye-opening, I guess, as to the extent of, of what people out there are doing. And, um, you know, the, the main thing with this sheet of questions is just that, you know, the Wetlands Protection Act has these that I um, got while we were taking the classes. Um, and I just thought these would be good to kind of have, excuse me, I'm in trouble with this. Is everybody vaccinated? I yes. Um, 
Oh, we can hear you better, too. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, and so, you know, and again, we can edit this or reduce it, but I just thought it was, like, a good cheat sheet to kind of have, you know, keep these thoughts in your mind while we're reviewing people's submissions. Okay. Um, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we, um, I mean, I think we can go through these, um, I think, fairly quickly, <laughs> hopefully. And in fact, just starting from the, on page one where, where it's identified as general conditions, uh, number one, I think, is, um, is actually um, an excellent condition to add. And I'll just read it into the record. Uh, under general conditions A, and that's on, um, on the first page, it says, a member of the Conservation Commission or its agent may enter and inspect the property and the activity that are the subjects of this order at all reasonable times with or without probable cause or prior notice and until a certificate of compliance is issued for the limited purpose of evaluating compliance with this order and town bylaw and bylaw regulations. Now, I will tell you that we have, I think, I can think of one instance uh, where there was an applicant who, um, who, who basically um, prohibited us from going to his property, which I thought was counterproductive. But I think number one, I think would be, um, even though it's sort of self-evident and in 99% in of the cases, um, the, the applicant understands we need to go onto their property to take a look. But I think number one is something that we should just put in there. It's kind of, an, from my point of view, it's a no-brainer. Well, I'm not, you know, uh, I think the answer is yes. I think we have to. Yeah. Is this being recorded? It is. This is a public meeting, so um, it is being recorded. Uh, and I imagine that there will be minutes prepared from um, from this meeting, even though we're not considering any um, any applications at the present time. Um, it, you know, it, 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 it's considered a public hearing. So, um, and I'll consider anything... So that, let me so let me say that about number one. In addition, there's also no requirement. I mean, for us to get to do everything tonight, but um, with any luck, we can be pretty, um, I think, efficient, and we can go through these and and have a discussion. So um, I wonder if there would be a motion to accept uh, on on the sample special conditions for well and orders under A general conditions number one. If there's a motion to include that uh, <clears throat> on the town of and special conditions. So moved. Is there a second? A second. All right, Patrick, is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. So we will incorporate number one. Um, and Mike, just before we go any further, I just yeah. wanted to bring this. So this is actually an order of conditions. This is just the special conditions. This 50, 50 town? pages from the town of Sudbury. Um, and I, I, it's not important that this specific order of conditions, but um, one thing I did learn as well in this class is that often people write out findings and it's like paragraphs of information that we are accepting as this is what's being presented and this is, and it's, it's interesting. Um, I mean, it's very long. And then the special conditions start and there are, I mean, it's just amazing how much work and energy somebody has put into, you know, keeping this project in line. And um, I don't think we should get to this point, but I just feel like there's got to be some well, I, middle place. My first question would be, does Sudbury have a conservation agent? Pardon? Does Sudbury have a conservation agent? Absolutely. Because they probably do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and all kinds of other... You know, I'm, so the, the way I look at this is that I think there has to be a, a balance between, um, I think, um, we, I think we need to be reasonable and I think we need to be efficient. And, and also obviously while complying with the Wells Protection Act, the Rivers Act, and also the, our regulations and bylaws. So I think it's a, it's a balancing test. And it's what we can enforce. Um, it's what we can enforce, exactly. So, you know what, you can, uh, I mean, we could, <laughs> By caveat, we could adopt all of, all of these special conditions, but if uh, you know we have we have some enforcement ability, we do have the, the ability to find now. Um, but I think again, it's a question of what we think is within our scope of of authority that we think is reasonable in terms of enforcement. So, 
just that we shouldn't be afraid to. Oh no, I I agree. Put down certain things and, and spelling it out more. I guess you know a lot of us, a lot of what I I'm just assuming that they understand that we mean a lot of this stuff, and instead I think we actually put it put it down on paper. Um, so that's all I want to say. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. So number two um, is, says the term applicant is used in this order of condition shall refer to the owner. Any successor in interest or successor in control of the property referenced in the notice of intent supporting documents in this order of conditions. The commission shall be notified in writing within 30 days of all transfers of title of any portion of property that take place prior to the issuance of the certificate of compliance. I think number two is also eminently reasonable. Um, we've had many instances where, um, we, in fact, we've had recent instances where, um, you know, parties are applying for certificates of compliance. The property had been transferred maybe once or twice before and we were never received any notice of it. So I think uh, number two, which defines what an applicant is, I think is a reasonable addition. Any discussion? Okay. If you, in that case, is there a motion um, to um, uh, accept number two? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. Um, Next one on my list was number five. Yeah, three doesn't apply because we don't have a conservation administrator or agent, so that unfortunately doesn't apply, so we will say no to three. Um, I don't know that four is really necessary. Before we proceed, could I just ask a question? Did everybody here get a chance to go through all of these before this meeting tonight? You didn't, okay. Just because what I did is I went through and I just kind of circled some that I thought were, were pretty decent, you know? Okay. Um, well, I mean, we uh, again, <laughs> this, this it could be a very time consuming process. Uh, what we could do, we can either go through them in order or if you believe, um, there are certain um, special conditions that uh, we want to focus on. We can do that and then go back to the others. I mean, I don't, again, I don't really care. I don't have a preference. Okay. You're, fi you're fine? We can jump to the ones we can do. All right. In that case, then, um, you mentioned number five. That was the next one I had. Okay, and I'll read into the in the record. The applicant shall provide a copy of this order to the person or person supervising the activity that is the subject of this order and will be responsible for ensuring that all persons performing the permitted activity are fully aware of the terms and conditions of this order. I think that's eminently reasonable. Contractors, if you know anyone can just come in and get the permit, but then once they, oh, the pool guy did it, and you know. Well, you know that, and and actually, I know exactly what you're talking about. Sorry, and that, I shouldn't have said that no. specifically. You're absolutely right. Um, yeah, that was my thought, and I think number six. Well, if we, if okay, let's start. Uh, Sorry. Do, do, do people feel that number five would be a, a worthy addition to our special conditions? I'll make a motion to. Apparently, I'll second that. Okay. All right, very good. <laughs> All right, um, is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, so we have also added number five. Perfect. I think I have in parentheses and town wetland bylaw and wetland bylaw by regulations. Is that in the number six? I don't have the full copy in front of me. Uh, it does. Yeah, actually, that language is included. I was thinking we could add that to this and kind of combine it as one. So it would be, as with requirements of this order, the act and town wetland bylaw and wetland bylaw regulations. All right, I'm sorry, do you want to add six to five or do you want to keep it separately? It was just going to be to add those last, that last phrase to the end of five. Okay, I see. And then we wouldn't need six. All right, so you want, okay, terms and conditions of this order, uh, the Wellness Protection Act, 310 CMR 10.00, uh, and, and town wetland bylaw and, and wetland bylaw regulations. Okay. 
Is that what you're yes. suggesting? Okay. All right. I have no problem with that. Is there any, any discussion about that? The only thing I would wonder about that is more of like a technicality thing, I guess, is um, number five is referring to performing permitted activity and is fully aware, um, but then number six says that they're responsible for compliance of the um, regulations and bylaws. So I don't know, like, with the language there, if there's a difference between... Well, the compliance part will come in the general conditions. Um, it was my thought. I mean, whoever's doing the work should be aware of... Um, I mean, they don't have to have an encyclopedic knowledge of, of the, the act or the regulations, but they should have a general knowledge of what they're, of what they're doing, for example. So, uh, and I think... I think uh, Allison's right about um, the general conditions probably covering that. So um, having said that, is Catherine made an order to, to take number five. Allison just amended it. So I'll just read what I think the new number, what, what the new condition would be. The applicant shall provide a copy of this order to the person or person supervising the activity that is the subject of this order and will be responsible for ensuring that all persons performing the permitted activity are fully aware of the terms and conditions of this order. Uh, <clears throat> the Act 310 CMR 10.00 and Town Wetland Bylaw and Town and Wetland Bylaw Regulations. So, um, can I have a motion to uh, approve that special condition as amended? So moved. All right. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, so vote. I think number seven applies too. I'll read it. <clears throat> if any change is made to the, in the uh, above described plans, which may or, or will alter an area subject to protection under the Wellands Protection Act, 310 CMR 10.00, and the Town Wetland Bylaw and Wetland Bylaw Regulations, the applicant shall, shall inquire from this commission, and I would cross out agent because we don't have one. Uh, prior to implementing the change in the field, whether the change is significant enough to require the filing of a new notice of intent. Any errors in the plans or information submitted by the applicant shall be considered changes, and the above procedure shall be followed. Any discussion? Okay. I guess it's surprising to me that that's not kind of applied already, but if it's you know, not, then that seems important. You know, include it because I think it might be a little bit in the general. It might be a little bit repetitive from the general, but expanding on it, I'm not sure. I, f I forget. I didn't bring it. You know, uh, the, the problem is that if there's any ambiguity, people can always say, well, we didn't know we had to notify you. You know, so you're, you're right. There's a lot of stuff that's sort of common sense and implied, but um, people don't always use common sense. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'd rather be repetitive than to be ambiguous. Uh, All these ones that are in the general conditions are kind of going to be just givens to every, you know, these these ones I don't think there's going to be a ton that, well, I take that back, actually. I think, As you we know, get down for the... Yeah, let's go through them and then we can make a determination. So, um, is there a motion to accept number seven? So moved. Is there a second? A second. All right, thank you, Megan. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's, it's a vote. I like number eight. I think number eight, number eight is pretty important to make sure that they go through, like, if it's a subdivision. Normally they would know that they need to go to all the different boards, but if you have somebody that just says, I didn't know. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this is to, you know, put them on notice that there are things they need to do. And even though they should know, it's, you know, this tells them that they, they have to do it. So I agree with, with you. I'll just read it into the record. <clears throat> Number eight says, it is the responsibility of the applicant to complete any review required by all agencies with jurisdiction over the activity that is the subject of this order and to procure all required permits or approvals. 
period. These reviews, permits, and approvals may include, but are not limited to the following, colon, um, one, <clears throat> review by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineer for any category two or individual permit activity and procurement of any permits or approvals identified by the Corps. Two, review by the DEP and in procurement of any permits or approvals identified by the DEP. Three, review by the Massachusetts Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program for any projects within estimated and or priority habitat and any permits or approvals identified by the program. Four, review by the local planning boards, boards of health, zoning boards, and building inspectors and procurement of any permits or approvals required by these boards or agencies. So I think um, it would be a good addition as well. Is, um, is there any discussion? There being none, is there a motion? Make a motion that um, we add number eight to the bylaw, okay. Robert Town bylaw. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. Okay. I like number nine. Yeah, I do too. I'll read, no, I'll read number nine to the record. It says, all construction materials, earth stockpiles, landscaping materials, slurry pits, waste products, refuse, debris, stumps, slash, I'm not sure what that is, or excavate, or excavate, may only be stockpiled or collected in areas as shown and labeled on the approved plans, or if no such areas are shown, must be placed or stored outside all resource areas and associated buffer zones, undercover, and surrounded by a double-staked row of hay bills to prevent contact with rainwater. Is uh, the definition of resource area clear in the bylaws? Uh, it is in our bylaw and also in the, um, in the act. Okay. So... You know, I think, you know, to your point, Allison, I think they're, they're actually using excavate as a, a noun and not a verb. I've never heard it referred to that way, but I think that's what it, it means. It was on purpose? I think it was on purpose. You say so. Well, just my opinion. No, I, yeah. I'm not grammatically very correct. Um, is there a motion then for number nine? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. I mean, number 10 is self-evident, but again, you can't take anything for granted or assume anything. Number 10 says, no material of any kind may be buried, placed, or dispersed in areas within the jurisdiction of the commission by activities that is the subject of this order, except as, express, except as are expressly per permitted by this order or the plans approved herein. That seems eminently reasonable. We don't want someone, you know, clearing a lot and then burying the stumps, right? Within the resource area. Stranger things have happened. So, um, is there a motion for number 10? Would that be covered under the Floods Protection Act anyways? Would our special conditions adding to that be so the, or would that just be? So the question is, is it repetitive? I'm missing those pieces of information I can compare it to, but I, I do think I thought about that as well. I, I didn't include it in my list. I'm not sure why I should have made okay. more notes. I mean, again, I think to the extent that it, it may duplicate the act, I see duplication is not a bad thing. And, I, and, and what I, the benefit of, I think, you know, we have an assumption, we've read the app, we've, some of us have read the regulations. Um, and I think there's an assumption sometimes that uh, whoever's doing the work has a working knowledge of it. I don't think you can assume anything. You know, because we've seen people do, frankly, stupid things and they plead ignorance and we don't want them to claim that as a defense, you know? So um, is there a motion um, for number 10? Make a motion we accept number 10 as an Auburn Town bylaw addendum. Okay. Is, um, all right, to the special conditions, is there a second? Second. Okay. Go ahead. Is there any discussion? 
<clears throat> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. Can I go back to number nine for one, one second? No, you may uh, not. Yes, of course you can. <laughs> Specifically, that it needs to be double stick, double stick row of hay bales to prevent contact with rainwater. I mean, is it necessary or prudent to be that specific? If I mean, Megan, so are there methods that would be better or worse? I mean, hay breaks down quickly if there were certain situations in which you would have. Um, this is if no such area. Oh wait, I'm reading this wrong. What's that? I'm sorry. I thought I was going to say, I, I was mistaken, but I was thinking that that meant, you know, if it was close to the resource areas and in the buffer zone that it would need these things, but I I am reading it wrong. So I think you're right. We can take out the, the last line if that's, um, I do want it to be covered or stabilized, I would say, I guess. Um, you know, the, the I mean, what, I, I, to your point, uh, Megan, uh, instead of uh, instead of putting ants surrounded by a double stick row of hay bales to prevent contact with rainwater, just you're saying that just as long as it's undercover, that would be sufficient. It's it's surrounded it, by erosion control and some erosion. undercover and stabilized or whatever the appropriate language would be. I mean, how they accomplish that seems, you know, as long as it's demonstrated that it's it's effective. Okay. We could say appropriate erosion controls as yeah. deemed by the commission yeah. instead of as specific as right. double state tables because we could use a siltation fence here or. Sure. Kind of put right. pigeonhole just to All save right. just hay bales. Right. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that, that seems reasonable. All right, so we need to go back to nine then. Um, so just going to the last few um, words of the last sentence. Um, Buffer zones under cover and surrounded by erosion control me measures approved by the commission? Yeah, first, I think that works. Okay, so we, I need a motion. Erosion control measures approved by the commission. Okay, is there a motion then to amend number nine? Make a motion we amend number nine. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. A second. Okay, is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, it's a vote, so um, we'll amend number nine. So we're up to number 11 now. It says there shall be no pumping of water from well and resource areas. I mean, I think generally that that is nope. true. That's already on our bylaw, isn't it? Because remember, Ron, we had the um, hydro seed company wanted to take water, and I'm pretty sure. Issued them an enforcement order because they were pumping water from. Uh, I think. Well, yeah, and I. Th but I thought it was because it violated one of our. You know. I think we that's did. That's what it. I thought it was. I think we did it because they didn't notify us.
So I don't know that we um, nope, I don't see it, specified. So. I'm looking at um, under was it 2.03 performance standards. We do talk about water bodies, but there's no specific prohibition about pumping water out of the well uh, out of the resource area. Mm -hmm. So I think we, for that reason, because it's not there, we can certainly um, we could add number um, 11 as a special condition. Yeah. And again, there might be, I can see a situation where depending on the scope or the nature of the project, um, an area could be dewatered mm. uh, during construction with the understanding that it's going to, you know, like establishing a, a, a replication or it will be uh, reestablished at a later date. But I think generally speaking, number 11 um, is, is, a good con is a good condition for us to, um, to include. So is there any, um, is there a motion to accept number 11? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in Maybe we could add a sentence for those exceptions to the end of it to say, um, except by the discretion of the commission. Unless there's a dewatering plan or something. Right, exactly. Um, instead of crossing the bridge when we get there, just being ahead right. of it. Unless otherwise approved by the commission. Right. Okay, I, I like that one. Unless, unless, otherwise approved by the commission. All right, so I'll just read into the in the record. Number 11, there shall be no pumping of water from wetland resource areas unless otherwise approved by the, um, by the Conservation Commission. So there was a motion, there was a second, and with that amendment, um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, so vote. I like number 12, too. Uh, number 12 says all waste products, grub stumps, slash, whatever that is, construction materials. So it's not the guitarist from Guns N' Roses, right? Nope. Okay. Definitely not. Um, that and forestry debris. What's that? It's both that and forestry debris. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> I, I have a question. Are there, are there any instances in which, uh, you know, like, slash or, you know, other, like, organic debris would be used directly like as a, a remediation um, or an erosion control or or something that where where you know there would be an exception. I don't think we're actually part of a, an erosion control or something like that. I I can't think of an <laughs> not these particular materials, I don't think. They grind up, well, what did they grind up on the site on Route 20 there to stabilize? Oh, it was it was like mulch, but it was just, I think it was from some of the stuff that they cut down. Oh, just to stabilize the slope. Right, just to stabilize the slope. Slash sometimes is left behind by large forestry operations to prevent erosion as well. You know, mm -hmm. just the, the, the underbrush, but um, that's like a large scale cover. Um, I don't, I can't think of an instance where it would be appropriate for the projects that we um, see here. Mm. Megan. Unless specified in this order. So, so and, and ex exactly to Allison's point, there is an, there is an exception um, sort of included in, in at the end of number 12 where it says, unless specified in this order. So there might be a situation yeah. where, to Tom's point, maybe, you know, um, something there, a tree or something is ground up, is used to stabilize the slope, and the applicant actually makes that proposal to us. So I think in that instance, we could approve something like that. Okay. So um, is there a motion then to accept number 12? So moved. Is there a second? second? All right. Is there any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. It's a vote. Uh, number 13 is sort of, um, I think, a no-brainer, but... It's, it says no, no fuel, oil, or other pollutants shall be stored in any resource area or the buffer zone there too unless specified in this order. Um, we've, we've had issues, at, you know, we've actually, there have been projects that have come before us and we've kind of, we've specified or um, discussed this sort of in a general, a general way. But I think putting in the special condition, uh, you know, explicitly setting it out, I think is, is useful. So is there a motion to um, accept number 13? So moved. All right, 
Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. I can't tell you my thought process, but I jumped down to 17 next. Okay. There's a lot of stuff on here that we just... I, yeah, I mean, I think we have to be careful of overkill. Yes. Don't forget when we give the orders, we're going to be reading four pages. So what I might say is in special conditions that are, that are applicable in our special condition sheet. <laughs> <laughs> All Two, the general conditions. Three, seven, plus. 34, yeah. Nine, 96. Yeah, okay. 96. <laughs> I, I, well, no. Be gentle with me when we go over these, okay? Exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, I, again, a number of these are kind of self evident. So let's go to number 17. No trash dumpsters will be allowed within 100 feet of areas subject to protection under the Wellens Protection Act or the town's by, the town bylaw. The town's bylaw. Now, not to play devil's advocate, but are there projects that we sometimes see where a, a dumpster there's it, it can't be avoided. There's no place to put the dumpster, but within 100 feet of of a uh, resource area. Right. Yeah. Except if deemed necessary by the commission or something, or if no other alternative is available. Oh, but then they have to provide us with an alternatives analysis for uh, trash. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, unless unless otherwise approved. Okay. So, uh, all right. I'll, I would propose this amendment: no trash dumpsters, no trash dumpsters will be allowed within 100 feet of area subject to protection under the Massachusetts Wellness Protection uh, Act or the town's bylaw. Um, Except at the discretion of the commission? Okay. Or how about we accept with the permission of the commission? Was there um Okay. Is that is this is that in any way redundant with I mean, trash dumpsters are more common on construction sites. Um, it's sort of a, it's slightly different in I mean, my mind. I mean, if you can't deposit the, the trash well, in 100 feet, you couldn't have a trash dumpster there, right? Well, I mean, I, I think the, the obviously the dumpster is the receptacle, whereas under 12, it's, you know, all the stuff you put into the receptacle, right? So I don't think it's I don't think it's redundant. I think it's in addition to number twelve. And again, I think the failsafe here is that, as I indicated, there may be projects where there's there you have to put a dumpster uh, with a hundred feet of of the um, the resource area, and we can allow them or give them an exception to 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 that um, that condition, or not even include it for that matter. And we could propose to change that that distance if if we feel more comfortable with fifty feet. Um. I think, yeah, I think 100 feet is probably um, overly... Properties are pretty small, and 50 feet is pretty protective. Yeah, I think 50 feet is probably, will, will be sufficient. So what do you think about that, Megan? 50 feet instead of 100? Um, I mean, what's the difference between 50 feet and 100 feet of I mean, I think it's high, probably fairly unlikely. 50 feet's a pretty long distance unless, <laughs> unless the dumpster's on a hill and it flows downhill. And I think we would, we would know beforehand what, what the project is, what the topo looks like. All right, so number 17 has been amended. I think the suggested amendment is no trash dumpsters, dumpsters will be allowed within 50 feet of areas subject protection under the, well, the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act or the town's bylaw, except with the permission of the commission. So if, um, if that language is agreeable, is there a motion to uh, accept number 17? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? 
All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, so vote. Um, I think 18 is n unnecessary. Um, I think 19 is, I think it's unnecessary. So Allison, what's the next one you have on your list? And this would be under B? I went to two, number two on B. Okay. All right. Number two under B, prior to construction, says prior to the pre-activity meeting and commencement of any activity on the site, the approved erosion control shall be installed as indicated on the approved plan. Well, I guess the question is, do we even know what a pre-activity meeting is? I mean, I think, how about if, instead of including that, why not just say prior to... Oh, I just the, said any activity. Or prior to the commencement of any activity on this site. Yeah. All right. That's how I edited it, but I guess I didn't. All right, so the amendment would read then, uh, prior to the commencement of any activity on the site, the approval rush control shall be installed as indicated on the approved plan. Seems very reasonable. Is there any discussion? I'd like to add number three to part of two to make it one. Oh, okay. Since we're talking about erosion controls, it would just simplify it, I think. Well, what is it? Tom wants to add three to number two. Instead of having two it as number a, two. Instead of having it as a separate special condition. Yeah. Me Megan? <laughs> Sorry, I'm having trouble telling when people are. Um, I think there's a few of the. Uh, maybe Megan, we're having problems hearing you. Uh -oh. Sorry. That's okay. So can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. Um, I was just saying, I thought maybe there few of these that could combined into one instead of separate ones separate items. okay do you which ones do you think can be combined it's adding what it, somebody said adding three to two and then I mean, honestly okay they don't clear the invitation we can't hear you megan i'm mumbling i'm mumbling Okay. And, um, Are you thinking aloud? Number, number seven. Let's take two and two. Well, yeah, why don't we do them in, in sequence? Okay. So we, we amended number two, uh, and then Tom had suggested adding number three to number two. Um, I think... I personally would like to keep three separate. If I may. Yes, please. If we approve, well, if we go through and pick and choose um, related but separate uh, special conditions, would it be possible to just list them all under um, er erosion control special conditions and say all? them in, in regards to, I mean, some of these are every single approved plan. You should not be able to put a dumpster within 50 feet. You should, it, it could all fit under one category on the special conditions. Okay. That means we have to <laughs> create a subcategory then under our special conditions. Well, it's just a header for it. So oh. putting them all into one category, that way, it, it, instead of combining things and mismatching sentences, you could approve what we want to approve and then also just put one heading over. This should be for every single site that we approve instead of listing it separately. I, you know, I have. I think that's a good idea, actually, because we quickly start from the beginning and just decide if we think they should be every project or if we think it'll be more. I would think one, two, three. So are you going back to A now? Well, I just thought, you know, the general conditions are pretty general. There was only... Um, well, we play on a lot. No, I know, but I feel like they are applicable to almost every project. Okay. 
Um, well, then what we're talking about then is we have to not only we're not only adding to our special conditions, we're actually going to be amending the existing special conditions to include subcategories. And I actually I think that's a good idea. You know, because it um, it might. Um, why don't we do this? Because I think we're kind of going off in a, little, in a few different directions here. Um, well, Patrick, to your point, so, because, and you're right, under B, prior to construction, most of these have to do with the, with the, you know, the, the installation of erosion control measures. So, assuming we use that as a subheading, how many of these would you include? Would you include all of them? So we've talked about two, talking about how um, prior to any activity on the site, the erosion control has to be installed as indicated on the plan. And then to Tom's point, how um, depending on circumstances during construction, during or after construction or prior to the issuance of certificate of compliance, we could require the applicant to actually uh, augment or update their erosion control measures. And we see it all the time where we'll go to a project that was built and uh, or is in the process of being built and erosion control measures have, have failed. So what do you suggest? What are you suggesting? Uh, I suggest that um, we continue the way we are, just approving them. However, the things that fall uh, within this B category can easily just fit under one header and say that all things within um, this erosion control set of special conditions will be applied to this project in the future. So we'll go through as as we are now, just going over okay. to. So why don't we do? I think what we can do is this, and uh, if I hear you correctly, go through the conditions we want to add, and then after we agree on these, we can then figure out a way to organize them. Yep. Okay. All right. So. Um, Anyway, uh, do we agree to take number, accept number two? I don't think we did yet. So again, my, um, and again, I, I, my goal here is I want to, I want them to be pretty straightforward. I don't want people to get confused. Um, I, I see two and three as being um, as being separate because the, the chronology is different. But I, I, in all honesty, um, it do, I don't care, frankly, that much if we if we add three to two, if we keep them as separate uh, conditions. So, what what are your thoughts on that? Um, I would like to propose that we accept both of them and keep them separately, and and that they would be on the sort of general, most every project list of okay. conditions. <clears throat> Tom, are you agreeable to that? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Um, when we take them separately, then, is there a motion to accept number two, which, as amended, would read, prior to the commencement of any activity on the site, the approved erosion control shall be installed as indicated on the approved plan? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All, right, so, all right. It's a vote. <clears throat> and the number three... At any time before, during, or after construction, and until the issuance of a, of a certificate of compliance, the commission may require the applicant to modify, augment, restore, or maintain erosion control measures associated with the activity as a, that is the subject of this order. And I, what I've done is I've amended number three to cross out or its agent because we don't have one. So is there a motion to accept number three as amended? So moved. Is there a second? I second. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. It's a vote. Uh, number four. Actually, <clears throat> number four has come up recently with um, a recent, recent work on a local property whose name will go unmentioned. So I'll, I'll read it. Um, and we I think we've agreed that pre-activity meaning kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. So <clears throat> I would suggest for number four, no clearing of vegetation, including trees or disturbance of soil, shall occur prior to the commencement um, 
of any work um, on the site, period. <clears throat> Minimal disturbance of shrubs and herbaceous plants may be allowed prior to commencement of work on the site. If absolutely necessary in order to place erosion control, marker stakes when, where required. So is there any discussion on number four? There being none, is there a motion to accept number four as amended? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. that number five is necessary. I think it, there are certain instances where it is, um, but I think just given because we don't have an agent, I think we, it, it, I'm not sure we could actually, it would be efficient for us to even try to include number five. All right, we'll skip number five then. Um, <clears throat> number six was very interesting to me. Um, I kind of like it actually. I think it's one of the ones that we'd put on a only sometimes kind of a list or, you know, maybe not every project, but I think for the big ones and the, you know, significant projects and some significantly valuable resources that we should be. I mean, <laughs> this is, this is, if you look at what they're saying though, it's really specific. Right. It talks about a marker with a four inch diameter yeah. white no. metal disc with green totally. lettering. Auburn Conservation Commission right. protected area. But we can use money that we have to, to put these signs up and protect the wetlands. I, and do I think it's great idea. All we have to do is fi find someone to make them. Right. So. Um, the DPW could help us. Maybe. Um, yeah, let's let's amend it to be more reasonable with what we would actually want. But it, but again, if, but even before you talk about that, if you look at the beginning of it, it says at the pre-activity meeting, well, no, there's no pre-activity meeting. The Conservation Commission's representative, who's going to be our representative? <laughs> well, I, you know, it's been proposed before. The problem is that agents expect to, be, expect to be compensated for their time. Right, but we get a lot of money for people's fines and fees. And I think we'd have to make a pitch to the, the Board of Selectmen. What does the parentheses bylaw? I wasn't sure if that meant that it had I, to be. I think this, you know what, perhaps it, it needs bylaw, it needs to be approved by. That it was in the bylaw for this. Town meeting? Yeah, maybe. It may have to be. So that's why. So I think for the time, I think it's a great idea, but I think for the time being, we should pass over six. There's another one that I think might be more help, we might be able to also use. Okay. All right, very good. Um, I think seven is redundant myself. All right. No, it says only for large projects with large resources. I think eight's a great idea, and actually some of the applicants have actually contacted us. So eight says, immediately after installation of erosion controls, the Conservation Commission shall be contacted in order to conduct a follow-up inspection to assure the erosion control measures have been properly installed. Um, you could also maybe put something like, or documentation to us, you know, pictures or, I don't know, we don't always have to necessarily do a, an inspection, but. So you want them to provide us with a report? Contact us, so maybe just provide us some proof. So that we want to go look at it, we can. But again, I put only for large projects with large resources, just because I feel like those are the ones that really should be making sure. What so, well, we could, right, and I, I mean, that's true for all of these. There are, obviously, there are projects where, um, more special conditions are going to be needed than others. So I think with that caveat, I think number eight probably is, um, we can include that. So having said that, is there um, a motion to accept number eight? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Megan, did you hear us? Okay. <laughs> Megan, I get it. Um, if you, ha I hope you have a cup of coffee. Um, 
The other thing, too, is, so let's see, we've been at it for an hour. I think we should decide how long we want to keep doing this because we all have um, lives. I think most of us have lives. We have like a page and a half before section C. All right. Does that seem like a reasonable place to stop? Uh, perhaps. All right. So we're now up to um, number nine. I have to nine. I don't know why. Uh, it's, it's much too long. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Um, and then I had... I had 10 could replace two, three, and eight. You mean the ones we already approved? Yeah, sorry. Why don't you tell us that? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. Jeez. Uh, in that case, we're not going to do 10. Okay. Because we've already done two, three, and eight. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll... I'll the, you, what's going to happen is that for the, the people that know what they're doing, they're going to look at, say, number 11, they're going to say, duh, you know? I'm just saying. Um, well, we've gone to a lot of sites and there's been no flags, and a lot of the people don't realize that it needs to stay up so that people actually know where they okay. are. I mean, I don't have a problem with number 11. But I said sev same as 17 on our standard order conditions. 17 says... Yeah. We don't need it then. Okay. Uh, agreed. Um, I see. What about number 12? I don't know why I didn't include it. Well, it says that they should notify the commission at least 48 hours prior to any activity on the site. I mean, any activity on the site is very yeah. broad. Um, so I don't think I don't, I don't think 12 is is really practical. We would be receiving documentation at all hours of the night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, and jive Ginger crazy, and we don't want Ginger to lose her mind. So number 13 was one that we recently <laughs> added as a as a condition. Um, 13. Yeah, where we wanted it to be monitored weekly. But is that what, not this yeah, I wrote that on the bottom here, weekly inspections for larger projects, like is it added? I think that's fine, but to have them engage a professional engineer? So, no, not an engineer, just a professional. So just a wetland scientist who basically um, is submitting regular monitoring reports. And I, I presume when you're talking about 13, you're talking about bigger projects, obviously. Yes. Okay, so... Um, so instead of professional engineer, a well and professional? Yeah, I just said an independent environmental professional. Is that what it says there? Independent. Independent. Environmental. Professional. Okay, so... I'll, let me read it into the record. Number 13. <clears throat> the applicant shall engage a independent environmental professional to act, to act as a clerk of the works. Uh, the independent environmental professional will supervise the contractor and will inspect the site regularly whenever construction within jurisdictional areas is in progress. The independent in, environmental professional, maybe we could use an acronym, IEP. The I, the I have I, reduced it to only this much. Is it really long? I'm looking at number 13. Are we looking at the wrong thing? Oh, and then it says or? So yeah, I'm not, I'm not to or I yet. I think I did the or one instead. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh I see. Oh. Well, oh. geez, you didn't see Cross that. Cross all 13. <laughs> Um, I did this. I expected to have my computer with me. I don't know why I was thinking. All right. So basically, disregard what I've just said about the first part, of number thirteen, yes. and we'll start with. You're right, because thirteen says either or. So we'll cross out that first part. Okay. I wrote that for nothing. Um, all right. Prior to any activity on the site, the applicant shall hire an independent environmental professional who shall be responsible for monitoring all activity within wetland resource areas and buffer zones to ensure compliance with this order conditions. The environmental professional shall inspect and direct the maintenance of all erosion and sed sedimentation control measures on site and shall submit regular progress slash monitoring reports to the Conservation Commission per condition of this order. I think that comes in later. The, 
the environmental professional will immediately notify the commission of any matter that requires attention by the commission. We don't have an agent. So I like that. Regular, it could be weekly, it could be monthly, you know. And again, because it's a special condition, it's probably not going to apply to most of the applications we get. I do have one question. Um, with some of these being brought up, um, we're saying only applicable to big projects, mm -hmm. will we have to put a definition on what big projects are? No. Okay. It's part of what we'll sort of... Our discretion? Okay. All right. <clears throat> For example, um, the commercial um, park right. at 190, 190 Washington Street is a big project. So I, I don't think we, we don't have to, I don't think. Okay, I, I just didn't I, know if that needed to be in the like no, it's a good point. section of things. All right, so is there a motion then to accept number 13 as amended? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. Um, I had a question about number 14. Now, we have that on our, now that we're allowed to, which I don't think we've ever done. I would not um, even include it. As far as a bond, deposit of money. You know, I know um, in the past that certainly there are projects that have been submitted to the planning board where they have required a bond. Mm -hmm. We've never ever asked for one. And I suppose there have been times when a bond might have been helpful. Um, but also, if you look at number 14, it also takes, it says bylaw. That might have to be approved by, by town, town meeting. Mm -hmm. So I think for, I think it's not a bad so idea by any means. So we actually already have it on our, on our, in our thing. By a proper bond, deposit of money, negotiable securities, or other to undertake in financial sufficient the opinion of the commission to be released in whole or part upon the issuance of a certificate of compliance for work performed. So it's actually already on there. Okay. So which is good. And it's redundant, so we don't need 14 because we already have it. But my idea was that when we have a situation like um, Rochdale Street, right. where we have somebody that doesn't come in, they make a mess, right. and then we tell them you got to do it right. Uh -huh. It wouldn't, might not be a bad idea to have them post a bond. So down the road, if we're dealing with stuff, you know. Yeah. I think, it, I, I, to your point, mm -hmm. when that was submitted to us, we had no idea it was going to turn into the, right. the debacle that it became. So, mm -hmm. But I, you know, I, I, I think you're right. I see a bond, though, and like I can think of an instance. Um, it was a, uh, it was a subdivision where the developer, I think, went bankrupt. And there were uncompleted lots, and um, there were certain planning board issues that hadn't been met, and they actually did get a bond, and they used the bond to complete the project. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can see instances where that might be applicable to, or we could, um, it would be beneficial for us to have a bond, too. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, I think if it's already in our... Yeah, it's already in there. So, it's, I, so it's interesting. So, I think we, we skip 14. I think 15 we skip to. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. I think 16 is kind of redundant to our being able to enter the property. Yeah. So I don't think 16 is, and also it, it, it appears it might require uh, permission by. I'd like to know what when they put in parentheses bylaw what they mean by that. But I think we I don't think we need 16 because we already have it. Right. Um, I had 17 a well sort of thing that shall be constructed prior to well installation. I mean, haven't seen them presented to us, but um, it's a. I, if the, yeah, I mean, I think we may always you. do that, and I think that's a standard thing, right? When they do it well, well, they have to like dig like a next they to the pit just to. No, they have to. So this way. Mm -hmm. I mean, we certainly have had projects where um, where the applicant is proposing um, the drilling of a well, 
Uh, I can't recall one recently, but I'm sure there are instances where, where we've had it. Yeah, so I think 17, again, it's probably one of the special conditions that we'll use once in a blue moon, but it's a good one to have. And I'll just read into the record. It says, number 17 says, a well slurry containment pit shall be constructed prior to well installation. So um, is there any discussion about 17? If there isn't, is there a motion to accept number 17? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, it's a vote. Um, I had another in there that I think I added on my own because <laughs> I have it in italics, so I think it might not have been in there, but... Um, a concrete slurry containment pit shall be constructed prior to any activity requiring the use of concrete or cement um, in the resource area. In the, in the, I should add, like, probably something about the resource area to that, but um, it reminded me of that because concrete often, again, they just dump the wastewater out and it's got, they did it in my yard. <laughs> Someone did this to me. So that's why I, um, I thought of it. I don't know if it came up later and I pulled it out or what, but that was one I was proposing. All right, so if you just if you could articulate it, maybe a yes. Little. So a concrete slurry containment pit, so something to hold the water that has the concrete and water in it from the end of the. So like if someone's building a foundation. Yeah, so building foundation once so this big truck is spinning around and they wash it down, okay. and all that wash water has concrete in it and really fine grains, and if they wash it into the wetland or okay. into the buffer zone. So a concrete slurry containment pit shall be constructed prior to any activity required the use of concrete or cement near the res in within the as part of the construction activity, right? Right. Okay. Um, did you get that? Probably not. Okay. Probably Point. not. I'll give this to you. Okay. okay. So, and that would be all right. So that's not on the list, but I, it, it's certainly um, similar to number seventeen. So, is there a motion to accept Allison's proposal? So move. Uh, is there a second? You can second yourself. Second, then. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. Okay. Um, I like 18. I think 18 probably is not going to apply to most of the projects that we we get, but certainly for a larger project, I think it'd be appropriate. And I'll just read it into the record. It says, prior to commencing act any activity on the site, the applicant shall submit the following to the Conservation Commission. <clears throat> uh, one, a set of photographs depicting the project in pre-activity condition. Two, a clearing plan showing areas to be cleared and left in the natural state. Three, a project slash construction dash sequencing plan. Or a statement signed by the applicant, owner of the property, and the person responsible for the construction of the project that such individuals understand the terms and conditions as specified in the order and that such persons agree to comply with the provisions of the Wellness Protection Act, local bylaw, and this order. I like it. <clears throat> if, if, you know. I like that in writing. You got it in writing, yeah. What if? <clears throat> it was up to me and it's not, I'd have them indemnify the town for any deviations or additional costs incurred if they don't comply. But I think um, I'd get into trouble for doing that. So, <clears throat> so anyway, um, is there a motion to accept 18 as, um, as I read it? So not, moved. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's a vote. Do we think that would be one we would use for almost all projects, or would that be a sum of the time? Uh, you know, I think if, if it's um, a renovation of a house or the installation of a pool, no. Okay. I think for a bigger project, and again, I think it's every, the, a lot of these are just case-by-case -case basis anyway. I'm just keeping track of what I think we'll probably maybe do all the time. Sure. And I think 19 is, um, 
may be appropriate, but I think, again, it probably would require town meeting approval, so I suggest we pass on number 19. So we've now re reached special conditions for additional information. It is 10 past 8. Um, what is the consensus of the commission? Do we want to go on, or have we had enough? Until 8.30. 8.30? Sure. All right. I like your spirit. Okay. For some reason, we skipped one and went to two. Well, two is kind of amplifies number one, doesn't it? I agree. I think two is probably a, a little better, more concise. And I have, oh, sorry. I just I have secondary containment shall be used under any equipment that may possibly leak oil or hazardous materials as a, a secondary line on number two. I think All right. You you can well you're going to have to repeat it. Okay. Uh, why, so, in fact, why don't you do this? Why don't you read number two and then uh, include your addition? <laughs> um, so number two, all equipment shall be inspected regularly for leaks. Any up, le up. I was talking about number two, uh, not under C, number under 10. special conditions. Oh. Um, I number guess. two says, prior to any work commencing on site, the applicant shall submit to the commission for this commission's approval a detailed written sequence of construction. Yeah, so I skipped both of those, oh. um, in my opinion, but I, that, that doesn't mean I... I was trying to reduce as much as possible, but you guys like them all, which is making me very happy. Well, well, I mean, the problem is that, you know, again, you know, I'm thinking that, of Ginger here, you know, we're going to be... That's what I'm, I'm worried her, about. You know, I was we'll have like 50 that. special conditions and she's going to be unhappy. Yeah. I was thinking that might be something we can as keep... As long as you're just reading off numbers when we're going through this, I'm all good. All right. I was thinking that's something we could keep in mind for more extensive um, projects that would have multiple phases. Um, so far, it doesn't seem like we've had a ton of those. But, well, I mean, it does happen. So I think because it does, and again, this is a special condition and all like, you know, probably this would not be um, apply, uh, wouldn't apply for 95% of the, the applications we get. So I do kind of like number two under special conditions, which says prior to any work commencing on site, the applicant shall submit for the commission's approval a detailed written sequence of construction. Even in just my short time on the commission, we've seen plans that have lacked this. So. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I think that it's appropriate. Okay. Is there a motion then to accept number two under special conditions? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. <clears throat> Now, Al, um, Allison, you, then you went to number two under C. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that that's a good one. I make a motion that we, well, I think we should add number two as part of number one because it already has that oil absorbing pads and hydride static booms shall be stored on site in case of spills. That's on our special, that's number one on our special conditions, Mike. You mean on our you know what I mean? So it's, you're talking about equipment, like having oh. equipment being inspected for leaks. Right. So I think it kind of ties into that. Okay, so... All right. Would it make sense to put one as part of two, but like at the end of two, if that makes sense? Because it's saying um, equipment should be regularly inspected, and then if there's a leak found, hmm. it'd be reported seems like that's a little bit more chronological than going one, then two. I had added the secondary containment shall be used under any equipment that may possibly leak or leak oil or hazardous materials, um, just because that's something I tend to add a lot. So going back to our existing um, um, special condition number one, which is the, in the second sentence talks about oil absorbing pads and or hydrostatic booms shall be stored on site in case of spills or burst hoses. Um, I think that sentence would follows um, would follow number two mm -hmm. under C. So we need to incorporate that. So, so we'll add this to our existing number one. Yeah, and I think you, if, if because you you actually had an addition to um, the second sentence of number two, 
I think you should tell us what, what it is again. Want it to, how do you want the whole thing to read with including number one? So how, including number one and then the following sentences? Yeah. Okay. So really, you start from the beginning and then include the changes. <laughs> uh, there shall be no storage, maintenance, or refueling of construction equipment or other machinery within the 100-foot buffer zone to wetlands or the 200-foot riparian zone to perennial streams, rivers. Oil-absorbing pads and or hydrostatic boom shall be stored on site in case of spills or burst hoses. Yep. All equipment shall be inspected regularly for leaks. Any leaking hydraulic lines, cylinders, or any other components shall be fixed immediately. Yep. And then secondary containment shall be used under any equipment that may possibly leak oil or hazardous materials. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm, I like the way it, uh, it flows. Okay. All right, so is there a motion then to uh, accept number two as amended and incorporated in our current uh, special edition number one? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. While I like number three, I think number three could also be very cumbersome. I didn't include it. Okay. For some reason, I have 10 next, which talks about fuel storage again. Equipment for fuel storage and refueling operations shall be located outside all areas within the jurisdiction of the commission, unless otherwise. Didn't, didn't we already cover that? Yeah, yeah. Does it? Some storage right there. Talked about yeah. that. So let's get rid of number 10. We don't need 10. We also dis we had also uh, discussed number 11. Right. How about number 12? Um, Oh. Yeah. Catherine? For reference, the one that was before, it was section A, number 13. The same thing. Yep. The other one, number 10. Okay. Now, number seven looks interesting. Yeah. Number seven says the storm drain system, detention basins, and compensatory storage areas shall be constructed and functioning as part of the initial project phase. I think that's all. Well, it's there's some of it in the general conditions. Uh -huh. it's a, if it has, you know, it's subject to the master, master stormwater standards, but that might be the only term some of these apply. So, yeah. I mean, again, um, I anticipate number seven would apply to big projects, not, you know, to a, the addition of a deck to a house. So number seven, um, again, I'll just read it back in the record. The storm drainage system, detention basins, and compensatory storage area shall be constructed and functioning as part of the initial project phase. So is there a motion to accept number seven? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, is there okay? Um, any discussion? Uh, I do actually for the uh, for the larger projects. In order to uh, complete um, some of these larger projects, um, they ca they happen in stages, it, so they don't have all of um, their controls and uh, in place or even on plan. Um, for instance, if there was a site ready uh, site being sold, uh, they they would not be able to install um, these controls in the initial phases of their of their construction mm -hmm. um, so are you you want to put in a caveat then um, Ex except um, so the timetable doesn't have to be just the initial mm -hmm. phases because then it kind of locks us out of future plans of the site okay if that makes any sense uh, no I, I understand I think I understand what you're getting at so how would you amend number seven except we're exempted by the commission? I'm trying to think of a way to say that the commission could set a different timetable for um, measures to be taken. Okay. Unless an alternative timetable is approved by the commission, would that be? Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> 
<laughs> like that. So in that case, then um, why don't you why don't you read it for us? So number seven would read, the storm drainage system, detention basins, and com compensatory, I can never say that word right, <laughs> storage areas shall be constructed and functioning as part of the initial project phase unless an alternate timetable be approved by the commission. Is there a motion to accept number seven as amended? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, so vote. Excellent. So number four was the one that, that says weekly. Once during each week, we will need someone. Um, and I think we can take well, the registered, and it could be any of those people, basically. Um, so I'm not sure what makes, what makes four different from 13. Um, it says reports to the Conservation Commission per condition of this order. I don't know if that would be number four. I don't know. Um, I mean, uh, a weekly report, I think, is, is, is frankly excessive. Well, not necessarily. There are sites out there that have wetland scientists every day that, that the project's going on because it's got that much movement and that much resource area. But certain ones, I think we went, wouldn't would we possibly ask for weekly, but I think we can specify that in the other one if okay. if needed. So I guess, I'm not sure why I included four. Is monthly, about monthly instead of weekly? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, so number, let me just read number four into the record then. Uh, at least once monthly, uh, in which construction activity occurs on site and for as long thereafter as ground remains unstabilized, the applicant shall submit a report from a registered professional engineer, registered professional land surveyor, a professional wetland scientist to the Conservation Commission certifying that to the best of his or her knowledge and belief based on a careful site inspection, all work is being performed in compliance with this order of conditions. So is, um, is there any discussion on that? If there isn't, is there a motion to accept it? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip eight. I don't think we need nine. I mean, if there are problems, we hear about it. Yeah. Um, we don't have to put in 10. Okay. We don't have to put in 11. Okay. Um, I like 12. I included it. I think, and again, 12 is very specific. I think we've had ver we've had a few projects where there are there is land subject to flooding, but frankly, not that many. But I think it um, it's a good idea to include number 12, which says compensatory flood storage shall be constructed prior to any filling of land subject to flooding. So, is there any, any discussion about that? There being none, is there a motion to accept number 12? So moved. Is there a second? I second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. Didn't we, um, no, I was sorry. I was thinking we already approved one that was similar to 13, but maybe not. Okay, I have 25 past eight. Um, it keeps going. Oh, it does, but I think we, you know what, we made a good, um, a good dent into it. And what we can do is we're meeting next Wednesday. We can discuss the next time we want to get together and 
do this, okay? okay. And, but in the meantime, Ginger, um, oh, you call me sir. Um, <laughs> if, if you could add um, the ones that we approved tonight to our our order of conditions so we, we can have a chance to look at them, that would be great. Yep. And um, all this, although this is not a public hearing, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Aye. aye, me too. It's a vote. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Ginger. You're welcome. Thank you, Ginger. Thank you, guys. Thank you.